Welcome to the campfire. I'm Tony. I'm Peggy. And we're two RV industry veterans who travel part time, but not in at the moment. In a small trailer. <laughs> <laughs> it's parked right there. Yeah, looking to share big adventures and help you with great tips, tricks, and discounts. We're getting ready, though. Yeah, we'll be we're, gone in a week. Yep, to Camp Carpe Diem. We have we talked about that a while back, yep. and they are starting to send some regular emails with all kinds of cool stuff, including. A distillery tour. Yeah. And there's a beer, like, swap type of thing. Yeah. And there's a hammock lounge. A hammock lounge. That's yep. right. And a bunch of other stuff. So we'll right. put a link uh, down below or in the show notes to Camp Carpe Diem. Cause yes. I, I don't know if you can still make reservations or not. but I don't know. But if you can, you should. It'll be yeah. fun. And plus, we'll be there, which right. is either a good thing or not. Well, great. You just talked them all out of it. Yeah, right? <laughs> so we are recording outside, as yeah. you can see, with the desert in the background. Uh, if you're watching this, if you're just listening, you're as watching, most people are. you can't are, see that. Yeah, but know that it's, it's New Mexico. Of course it's windy. Right. So if you're not watching, you might hear the breeze and the birds. <laughs> yeah. Well, especially the birds. We... There are a bunch of nests around here. Yeah. And the birds are not happy when we're out here. But hey, yeah. you know what? My name is on the title. So right. or our name like is it. on the title. We have three nests, I think, right here on the porch. Yeah, just right within uh, <clears throat> listening yeah, distance. Listening distance here. <laughs> anyway, so we talked this week, uh, we did a video about how much wind is too much wind for your RV awning. Any wind is too much wind for your RV awning. Yeah, we've, uh, <laughs> there's a whole story about it, but things like, you know, if you stake down your awning, does that solve it? And the answer in the story is no, because mm -hmm. we've seen them, especially, remember, I used to work at a dealership handling warranties, and I had seen more than a few where people staked it down. It just pulls it right out of the side of the camper. Yeah. I mean, what happens is, you know, people leave, for the day or they go out you know or they go to bed rather at night and leave the awning out and man that's just bad news so yeah not a uh, good idea yeah so anyway uh, there's a whole story that you can find in the link below or uh if i figure out how to put the the link to the story somewhere in this video then that means i've learned something this week all right <laughs> uh but i know how to do the links below and so there'll be a story about how much wind is too much wind for your rv awning and that's what, a new feature we have is the share worthy story so when you see people on whatever social media platform you like to troll uh and they ask that question you can answer with an article that's right you can share you can share the article from the website so yeah. well speaking of sharing we are coming to you from <clears throat> the power of starlink and what i did this week uh we have starlink in our travel trailer yep. and the way i did that is i routed the cable up through the baggage pass through in the front drilled a hole in the side of the rv and ran the cable and what i thought i'd do this week is just take that cable back out and put it in the house right well i did a really good job of routing that cable and just so it doesn't frighten you not really in the side of the rv just in one of the pass-through doors right and i'll put a link to how i yeah, did that yeah but anyway so what i did is i was <laughs> thinking well I can run Starlink from the trailer to the office because they're pretty close to one another. Yeah. But then, you know, what am I going to do? And I'm like, duh. It's We have power. We have plenty of power thanks to our ABC Upfitters Mastervolt power system. And so right now, the system is pretty much keeping the fridge cold because we're loading up for yep. our trip. Yep. And it is running our Starlink all off the grid you know you basically solar powered and so depending on how you want to run solar and lithium abc upfitters can really configure a system that works well with how you like to travel and i would give them a call if you're even at all curious at 574-333-3225 so again a really solid reliable solar and lithium system is is possible 
and ABC Upfitters has been doing it for a while, and they have actual engineers on staff. They use Mastervolt uh, power systems, which are from the marine industry, mm -hmm. so th very low tolerance for failure. And boy, some of the creative upfits I've seen from them are outstanding. So yes. again, if you're looking for a quality solar and lithium system for your RV of any size, uh, call ABC Upfitters or visit them on the internet. 574-333-3225 and they're just good people who will honestly answer your question. I love that we get to be outside but I'm like really hating that I'm squinting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, we're it's we're recording in the morning and the sun is doing its best job and it's either uh -huh. this or sit in the office. Right. And fooey on that because we have this I'm getting deck. solar power. Yeah, we're getting solar power. <laughs> Um, We're stealing a little bit of those solar panels. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> no, not really. There's plenty of sun to go around. Well, at least right now here in New Mexico. Okay, so maybe you haven't received your solar package yet. You haven't talked to ABC or you have your appointment and you're not there yet. Uh, is there some other, like, portable kind of way that we could get some well, power? Well, we see a lot of people ask questions about solar generators and if you're if you just cringed hearing that term yeah no so did we <laughs> um, but it's the commonly accepted term for these things they're portable power stations and so we found a guest who well we well, we found this total nerd yeah and we we're digging at the bottom of the barrel and so without any further ado you this get week, what you get yeah you get what you get <laughs> uh we have a guest talking about portable power stations let's hear from him my guest today what <laughs> is a is a weirdo is a weirdo named a Tony nerd, Barthel. A geek. <laughs> <laughs> we don't really have someone to interview today because we wanted to talk about things that we can talk about without a guest right well <laughs> what we're specifically talking about is portable power stations and some of you may call them solar generators solar generators <laughs> but they're really not generators at all they are basically a battery and a way to use that battery right and we could we see a lot of questions about how do i pick which one is the best uh and so we thought we would i'm i'm kind of a nerd and if you're watching this on video uh again we have made the commitment to do these podcasts on video yep. you'll see behind me and us are four little portable power stage poor portable well four? you only see three in the in well you behind could us maybe right see the weakest one no oh oh that's right yeah i brought them all okay so, um so we're just going to talk about portable power stations and we have quite a variety yeah and we're well, going to talk about why we have a variety and what you can use each one for yeah that's true i mean not specifically because your needs are different than ours but kind of ideas about things that you know, what can this do and what can that do? Yeah. So first of all, uh, so <clears throat> the first thing to do is figure out what are you going to power? Right. Um, what is the device that you're going to want to, to charge um, or operate? And, you know, it could be as simple as, well, I, I really just want to recharge my phone. Right. And then so that might be... <laughs> Just about anything out on the market can do sure. one or maybe even two phones. And what Peggy's holding up is a Go Power. Wait, Go know, Power uh, portable. It's portable. A, it's eight watt solar portable power pack. The solar part is built right in. These are four solar panels. It and then this is the battery part. It folds up so that you can carry it around easily. Whoops, I did it wrong. <laughs> So that you can carry it around easy in a nice handy pack. You can plug USB or... Yeah, that, it's, well, it's USB-A. Oh, USB. Or, well, um, this is the end port. Right. So, so that's, you can also charge it electric, you know, with electricity, or you can plug it into a USB. And so if you have a phone that charges with USB, that yeah. is... 
a yeah. nice portable way to do it. The way that they advertise these in the beginning is to hang the solar panels out the back of your backpack. So when you're hiking, you're charging your pack. Yeah, and so this this is very small. This basically is only for, like, I can charge the GoPro. Uh, I can charge two phones at once with this. There's a high-speed and a low-speed USB-A. This mm. is old enough that it doesn't have a right. C. We've had these for a few years now, and yeah. that's what they're good for. They're phone chargers. And that's the <clears throat> that's really the way to determine what you're going to do. How much power do you need and for how long? Uh, now, the easiest way to do this is to break it down into watts. Really? Trust me. Do I have to? Math. I know. As <laughs> Jimmy Buffett said, math sucks. I love math. I'm, I'm all on this right well, now. <laughs> so depending on what all you want to power, you're going to want to know how many watts it takes. So all of these things pretty much are rated in watts. And then how long that's going to that's going to consume that power. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, our induction cooktop uses 120 volts. It's a household plug. And it uses, I believe, 1,500 watts. Okay. So if I get one of these, like behind us are these larger portable power stations. I have like a Jackery, Jackery 1,500. Is that, that 1,500 has 1500 watts? watts of power in the battery reserves. So that means, in theory, I can run that uh, induction cooktop for a full hour, right? It's 1,500 okay. watts. Watt That's hours. how much it's, yeah, so it's 1,500 watts in there, watt hours, and I can run it for an hour. Okay. But think about, for example, if you're powering a portable heater, Mm -hmm. Those are often 1,800 watts. but Too big for that. Yeah, it might be too much draw. And also, it may, you know, those things cycle, so they go on and off. And typically, what I've found is that when you want to change temperatures, it, t it consumes a lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. So portable air conditioners, portable heaters, all of those things might be too much. Now, And even things like electric cookware, right? Like crock pots and well things like that those uh, cycle crock pots are kind crock of lower pots are too. very efficient but maybe air fryers might be higher. air fryers are probably and all of these so what you're going to do want to do is know how many watts you're going to want to draw for how long and what's the peak uh things to know is that things that have electric motors often need a big kick in the tail to get the motors right. running. So that's why, for example, you'll see, uh, let's say you have an air conditioner on the roof of your RV and you have one of those 2200 watt generators and you know that the air conditioner only uses 1800 watts, whatever the numbers work out to be. But it, it as soon as the air conditioner kicks on, it trips that generator. Mm -hmm. That's basically, it needs a big kick in the pants to make that air conditioner run, to get those that motor started, get your motor run. And, and that number is usually bigger than the kind of overall rating of the air conditioner, because that's kind of the average right. number. So, um, for example, some of these devices have uh, continuous running watts and peak watts. So some of these portable power stations do accommodate that kick in the pants. Okay. Some of them don't. Okay. Uh, so again, another thing to know. Um, and it, the way to know that is just to read the description of it and, and know yeah, if it, it has that. Yeah, it should be able to tell you. Okay. So, um, and the other thing is where and how are you going to use your portable generator? Right. Um, for example, do you use it on the road? We use ours to power our portable 12 volt cooler. Right. Especially on the road. when we go to Costco. Yeah, well, there's that, but, but mostly on the road. Right. But yeah, if we're making a big Costco run and it's going to be a while to get home. <laughs> 
if you're watching this on video, the, this. we are near where the <laughs> birds have their nests and they're not happy. And so we will throw the cooler, the 12 volt cooler in the back of the, in the back of the truck and use one of these to power it to get us, keep our frozen, keep our ice cream cold. On Absolutely. The way <laughs> but, but here's the other thing. I know some people will buy these for camping or RVing. Mm-hmm. And then also anticipate using them at home for power outages. Right. Um, for example, I know that this uh, this U Green will kick on our water pump, but the Jackery will not. So because of that peak. Because of that bump. kick in the tail. Kick in the pay. So that's another thing. If you want to use this as emergency power supply in your house. Um, know what the things you want to power. Right, you're not just going to plug this into the house and run the whole house. Oh gosh, no, no, no. You're going to need to know what things you need to keep running. Maybe your refrigerator, maybe your well, especially CPAP or CPAPs, uh, oxygen, oxygen or something machines, like that. Uh-huh. any medical appliances. That's and that's when you really want to know how many watts you're going to be consuming and for how long. And in that case, I would even potentially think of two days worth of power because what if you can't charge it right, the next day? Right. Um, so, yeah, no, especially if it's uh, life critical, know what you're going to be using it for and for how long. Um, and these absolutely can power... Uh, some of these medical devices they would do a great mm-hmm. job and then that begs the next question how do you recharge them right so if you're if we're home and we're sitting around the house and there's outlets all over the house all of these everything can be charged just by plugging them in but if you're at home and there's a power outage the whole point is that you don't have power but all, am I right that all of these can be charged with solar panels? All of them can be charged with solar panels, but how quickly is a variable as well. Right. So, um, for example, the, the Jackery has its own brand of solar panels. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you could charge it with that. And it, it takes about 10 hours of good sun to, to recharge that up. jackery the jack this now that's not jackery in general that's this specific 1500 watt jackery okay. um so know how long it's going to take to recharge the U green and the blue eddy both have a fast charge mode so they can charge <clears throat> more quickly um you can also charge these let's say you do live in an area where there's the power can shut off if you have a portable generator you know gasoline whatever propane generator that could charge these too and the reason you would want to maybe do that is overnight you don't want to hear that generator running right but you do need the cpap or your refrigerator or some other critical stuff to operate overnight and again you'll want to know how many watts does the refrigerator take? How many watts does the CPAP take? You might have to have multiples. So knowledge numbers are a really uh, important thing here. Now, can you explain if those have a fast charge option, why would you not do that? Is there a reason to not fast charge? Well, that, okay, that's the next section that we oh, have here. Oh, sorry. Is the, no, that's <laughs> how your timing is fantastic. Jumped right in there. The quality of each of these things. So there are, you can get lost in the weeds of what type of battery, what type of charger, how many cycles you can charge. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, and, and that is... An important thing to know, too, because the higher quality units tend to have the provision to charge faster and can be charged more More times. times. So, for example, this Jackery is probably the the battery chemistry in this unit and the charge controller are probably the poorest of any of the ones we have. You cannot charge it and use it at the same time, according to them. Although I have, um, you 
you need their solar panels to recharge it and their connectors because it does not use commonly available connectors. It uses proprietary connectors. Mm -hmm. So let's say you break a connector on a solar panel. Well, now you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so this thing can recharge. I think it's 600 times okay. and that's it, which might sound like a lot and it's a lot, but it, Depending to, on how you're using it, if you're only using it when you go camping yeah, once a month, it'll probably last you yeah. until you're tired of it. Yeah. The other two that we have, and there's so many brands, so we're not endorsing any specific brands. These happen whatsoever. to be the brands we have, right? Um, they use a higher quality <laughs> charge controller, so it can charge faster. Uh, it uses a much higher quality battery. Uh, these will recharge, I think, 3,000 times. That's a lot more than 600. That's a lot more than 600. <laughs> it is a better, just a, a better package altogether for a lot of reasons. It's a different bat battery chemistry, Different right? battery yeah. chemistry. Okay. It's in what's called an MPPT charge controller, which means I can both charge it and use it at the same time. So in other words, I can stick the thing in the sun and also use it at the same time. Right. So that's, a, to me, a big plus. Uh, so those are some of the, the advantages. So when you're looking at this, look at how many cycles can you charge it. Mm -hmm. Look at can it be charged and discharged at the same time. How quickly can it be charged up? Right. And how do you charge it up? Can you, do you have to plug it into the wall? Do you only have the option of solar, which is uncommon? Um, what kind of connectors does the solar have? Mm -hmm. uh, are they standard connectors that, uh, that you can find on, for example, these two that the non Chakri ones that we have, I can use my Go Power solar panels. And they have just standard connectors on them. And uh, I can just use them on these portable power stations. So those are the things to look for. Not any particular brand. Because let's be honest, most of them are probably made in one of a few factories somewhere in China. <laughs> so it's really a matter of components more than anything. So the other thing to look we at. We haven't talked about this little guy. Yeah. Uh, you know, the size of what you want to have is also important for a variety of reasons. How portable is it? And what do you want to charge with it? Right. This thing is kind of, and how much power can you get out of it? And uh, to a certain extent, what you can plug into it. For example, right. this you can plug in. We showed you that other one, only USB-A because it's old. Right. This one has USB-A. It has the US, it has C's USB C also. and that one that has two widths that I don't know what it's called. <laughs> uh, my Kindle charger. <laughs> yeah. Well, this but, also has an induction charger. And yeah, so you can you lay can your phone right on it. the phone right on. This one has a this Actual one has a house, outlet, household this outlet. Is the, and by the way, we have a full review of this Bouge RV uh, Juice Go, it's called. We have a full review, I think, of the U Green and of the Blue Eddy and of the Jackery. I think we've done full reviews of all four all. of these. Right. So we'll put links to those down below. I don't know if you can see the Yeah, it's the Blue Eddy. But it's there. It's there so I this promise. one has a household outlet. So one of the things someone asked, can this power a CPAP machine? And I would say no, because it doesn't have enough battery reserves to run a CPAP overnight. Trying to find the number on it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and I, I did that in the review. But if I were out on the road and I wanted to recharge a drone or, I don't know, a drone, some phones, maybe even run the cooler for a few hours. A laptop? This might, absolutely a laptop. In fact, we ran our laptops off this uh, Bouge RV Juice Go for a while and this one does have USB-C it has a 30 watt and a 100 watt and USB-A and it's got the charge port aka cigarette lighter <laughs> uh, it's got you can power this with a standard uh, 
input from a solar panel, so it's a standard connector, or you can actually recharge it with the USB-C port, although it takes four to ever. <laughs> it is so low when you use that port, but it is able to do it. That kind of gives you a hint, though, right? Like how what you can do with it based on what you know what charge inputs it has right. or what use inputs it has we couldn't ever charge um this with that it doesn't have up us use that's the USB little go power C. so this it would well, only be for we, phones uh, i yeah, would think phones it would only be for or phones. the gopro but this one if it's got usb c does that mean i can plug my laptop into this you could and it would actually have <laughs> sufficient power to recharge your laptop if memory serves two times okay so it's actually pretty good <laughs> that this uh the lion energy which we bought in quartzite um we really like this this one goes with us pretty much all the time it's very light it fits in a backpack uh it has all of the charge ports that we like plus it's got an induction charge port um and then if we know we're really going for like a video shoot or something where we need more power we'd probably bring this bouge rv juice go and this would also power our uh our cooler for enough time depending on how long we're going depending so. on if it's a day if it's a day <clears throat> trip to do a video if it's an overnight trip then we're probably going to go bigger and have the opportunity because we're going to have our cooler and our laptops that need to get charged so we can process the video and things like yep. that so yeah so it's the bottom line is know what you want to power know for how long you want to power it know what type of connectors you need to make it go and then just shop based on that and then look at sales and reviews. Uh, it's It might seem very confusing. It's like, gosh, there's so many brands and there's so many sizes and blah, blah, blah. And really, it it's not that complicated. But yes, there are a, a bajillion different brands, a bajillion different sizes. But if you know what you're going to need, uh, then you, you should be fine. We have, by the way, you look at uh, for example, I'm, we're sitting here on our back deck right now. Uh, we have a, a pellet smoker. And you might think, oh, barbecuing, changing temperatures, that consumes a lot of energy. No, actually, I can actually run the pellet smoker with the Juice Go, with the little brick, basically. Because the pellet smoker itself isn't changing temperature, right? Right, it's burning It lights those. a fire, and what you're using the power for is the feeder to keep the pellets in the fire to continue it burning. Essentially, yeah. So again, you know, it's know what you need. And mm -hmm. that's our advice in portable power stations. And, and shop carefully and look for sales and buy something that's got great specs, you know. And that should get you a good portable power station. Should. Now, I just have one more question. Okay. Will one of these... Um, top off my RV battery if I'm just if I have if I maybe I have solar panels on the roof but it hasn't been very sunny and I know I have this sitting in you know fully charged ready for emergencies is that the kind of thing that it can do or yes but not very much well it's the equivalent now if you let's say you have a travel trailer and you have two batteries on the tongue but they're what they call flooded batteries uh -huh. the old-fashioned batteries where you can pop off the top and look at the water right and let's say those are pretty low one of these uh like the 1200 watt is about the equivalent of a single lithium battery that you'd put on the trailer so oh. yeah you could actually plug in a portable power station and fully recharge your batteries okay so that would actually be a good use for one of these and now then, I'm going to go a little too deep. Okay. If you have a lithium battery and it's getting low, can this be a second sort of lithium battery for your RV? Yeah, I guess. Like you can run your lights off of this instead of... Well, it would still use too, the battery on your tongue, but this could be... like this could keep supplement the battery charged. That. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then in theory, if you <laughs> buy a good portable power station where you can use the... Or you can charge it and... Use, use it, it at the same time you theoretically could use this to recharge the battery in your trailer and put your solar panels out and and bing bang boom and honestly that would be a, a another good use for it so this is powerful enough 
If you keep it charged with solar, it will charge your RV. Yeah, depending on the size of the portable power station. Right. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, that is a good question. <laughs> well, if you have any questions about this or you're falling asleep or whatever it is. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it is warm out here. <laughs> don't don't hesitate to we always appreciate your input, your comments, your questions. Yes. Uh, that's how we come up with this kind of silliness. And so hopefully you feel empowered. Oh. I feel all charged up. <laughs> oh, this has been an electrifying segment. <laughs> ah, here we go. Oh my gosh. But, um, well, I'm glad for Peggy and her battery of questions. <laughs> I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You're fully discharged. I <laughs> pretty much am. All right. But there the, we solar, go. the solar the uh, solar charging yeah. is doing great for my back. So. Yeah, this is a good day out here <laughs> in beautiful New Mexico. Indeed. More than 50% of RVers suffer from CD, many without even knowing it. I used to get excited before our RV trips, but then I started having issues camping issues. Like I just lost that spark for pulling into the spot for the night. No matter how much I wanted to, I just couldn't get into it. And it wasn't just affecting me. It was upsetting her too. Every time we tried to go RVing, it was the same thing. No, literally, the exact same thing. Over and over again. Where's the excitement, the butterflies, the feeling you can't wait to rip open your RV door and explore? Not here. I knew it was CD, but it's too embarrassed to talk about it. Camping dysfunction, or CD, can affect any RVer, anytime, anywhere. But you no longer have to suffer in silence. You can take action. That's when I found out about Harvest Host. It's a network of more than 5,000 small businesses coast to coast where RVers can stay. Farms, wineries, breweries, attractions. Harvest Host really helped me find that camping spark again. And the best part is, it worked right away. No more planning ahead. With maximum privacy and safe, beautiful settings, nine out of 10 doctors recommend habit-forming Harvest Host as the cure for sad camping. Do not try a Harvest Host if you're allergic to Harvest Host, having fun, loving where you camp, Side effects may include fewer arguments, better sleep, supporting small business, and even bow chicka wow wow. Turns out it just doesn't have to be that hard. Take note, ladies. See you later, CD, and hello, Harvest Host. Can't wait to do it again. Talk to a doctor to find out if Harvest Host is right for you. But don't really, because they won't know what you're talking about. Unless, of course, they RV, in which case they'll talk your ear off. You know what? Just check it out online at harvesthost.com. Harvest Hosts. A more satisfying way to camp. So hopefully you enjoyed that Harvest Host ad once again. Um, <laughs> and hopefully you enjoyed our special guest for the week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that guy. But anyway, Est la vie. Est la vie. So anyway, um, I hope that you enjoy our recipe this week. It's not sugar, even though I have been kind of focused on those sugar recipes lately. And it's not cauliflower. I'm not going back that far deep into no, the No, that just weeds. undoes my innards. Yeah. But what it is, is a it's gluten-free. Yeah. And so it's pretty much keto. And it is a flatbread. And so I made it with, I, I saw a recipe and I tweaked it a little bit. You take one whole zucchini and shred it and let it dry or squeeze it out, ideally, which I never take the time to do. <sighs> Then you take a cup of shredded cheese, two eggs, and a scoop of fiber, like all-purpose, like psyllium husk fiber, and put that all in the blender and blend it till it's like a smoothie. Then put it out on parchment on a baking dish. We happen to have a like an eight or nine inch round dish for our convection oven. So I make two sort of tortilla flatbreads. But if you want one big flat one, you can just use a big cookie sheet or something. But do use the parchment, because otherwise it kind of sticks to the pan. Bake it at 350 for 20 or so minutes-ish, and you have a really good flatbread. It's not as thin as a tortilla. Like, I think it was originally a recipe for a tortilla, but I pour it a little bit thicker, make it kind of even in the pan, and make it thick enough that we can roll food in it, like to make a lunch wrap, and not have it tear up. All right, us. so what I did with it this morning, though, is I made 
Oh, what are those? Huevos Rancheros? Yeah. So I got some green chili salsa, because hello, we're in New Mexico. And I made some rice yesterday, I think. Yep. And then I put cheese, melted the cheese on the rice, put a bunch of salsa, fried an egg, and I also refried the these tortilla things. Mm -hmm. And whoo that was good. So last night we used one, and Tony made... Basically, a stacked enchilada, which yeah. I had never really heard of until we moved to New Mexico, but it's pretty popular here. You can get your enchiladas rolled or stacked. So it's kind of more like lasagna, but with enchilada flavors. Las enchilada. Las enchilada. <laughs> Las enchilada. <laughs> Las enchilada. And so we layered, we layered the flatbread and rice and chicken and salsa and guacamole and sour cream and is really really good but so these things are pretty versatile and uh you can check out the recipe on our website on the food page the recipes page forgot what it was called all of a sudden <laughs> it's and the sun it's cooking your brain I think it's it cooking is. your think o -matic. <laughs> so yeah it was those things are pretty good so this week you know i do regular rv reviews for a number of people and i was looking at a floor plan now a lot of these rv companies if a floor plan really hits other rv companies will copy it sure and this is the case but the neat thing about that is they might prioritize the bathroom or seating or the bedroom or whatever it is you know they all do things a little differently sure so this week I looked at a floor plan that's pretty common and it's I'd call it a mid-sized trailer under 30 feet or about 30 feet bathroom spans the entire width of the back really big living room with a large slide and then a bedroom up front it's something I think every RV maker makes yeah and I'm looking at this thing and they put the fuse box in the bedroom and it was in the it, bedroom that you can't reach through this with the slide closed? that's the fact jack Oh, I mean, interesting. So it's the first time, and this was a Jayco 25RB. It's the first time I've actually said, don't buy this thing in a yeah. review because that's just dumb. Yeah. I mean, who, I just, so then it got me on a kick of this floor plan. Okay. So I looked at the Keystone Cougar. That's a pretty good one. Okay. Um, I had looked at it in the past. I looked at the Flagstaff Superlight 25 RBWS. That review will be out Friday. So if you're watching this Thursday or listening Thursday, uh, it'll be tomorrow that you have to see it. You have a mere 24 hours to wait. That's the fact, Jack. <laughs> uh, but... I mean, it's just that Rockwood or the Flagstaff, well, Rockwood and Flagstaff are the same thing, right? Right. That Flagstaff and the Jayco, the the Flagstaff is so much better in so many ways. Mm. It's that, If you find a floor plan that you like, shop around because yeah. there are others who may do it who just knock it out of the park and... I mean, I don't know. I, so, I was just so disappointed. But then also, on Sunday, I believe, or Monday, I, I lose when these things are coming out. Heh. There's also an Ember version of this floor plan. Oh. And they have, they also knocked it out of the park. They have something they've done that's very, very unique. So, again, I just... That uh, Jayco was, was, and again, cheap buggy springs instead of a real suspension and so many things. And now Jayco had this neat thing where they used to have what they called J Smart lighting, where they'd mm -hmm. flash the tail lights, the marker lights, and the side marker lights. Used well, to? Yeah. They took it out. Why on earth would they take out such a great because thing? Because like some accountant somewhere said, oh, let's save Cheaper seven bucks. Cheaper to do bucks. it a different way. So instead of having a competitive <laughs> advantage, which is gone. So just to be clear, if you have this that Jayco with the fuse box in the bedroom and your slide is closed and you blow the fuse that runs the slide, let's say, how are you going to... You're <laughs> well, going to have to put it out manually in yeah, order you, to get in there to get to the fuse to fix it. But I mean, I wonder how many people know how to use the manual overrides on their slide. So I that mean, would I be wonder how many people know where their fuse boxes are. Well, that's just... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but still, I mean, it's I, I was very disappointed. Yeah, not a good plan. So last week's question of the week 
we asked you to share your experience that you've had with overnighting in a rest area and including where you were of course and gail said that she has uh, slept in a rest area in uh, near san antonio uh, near san antonio and they had great bathrooms good drinking water and it was well lit uh, but it was kind of noisy as expected mary Mary has stayed at one in Cottage Grove, Oregon, and it was small, but she felt safe. Tony said he was going to share uh, the Jimmy Buffett show, so let me finish the list and then he can do that. Uh, Deanne pointed out that a lot of Colorado, or most or all of the rest areas in Colorado have been closed down, and yeah. she was trying to make it to one near Raton. And some people said that instead of using a rest area, they use Cracker Barrel, and that that makes sense. I think, you know, there are if you don't know the rules, there are states that don't like you, don't want you to sleep overnight in a rest area. So if you don't know, the Cracker Barrel is easier to get in touch yeah. with. Well, and maybe. <laughs> Brian said he was driving a lot back and forth during COVID from New Orleans to Albuquer Albuquerque in one day. Whew. Oh. And taking short naps in rest area and picnic areas along Highway 287 in Central Texas. <clears throat> and sorry, I can't really see this very well. The Rifle Rest Area in Rifle, Colorado had a dump station, but it was closed when we were there. Actually, I have been to that rest area with my grandfather. Not huh. to camp, of course, but to picnic on our way home from my mom's or to my mom's. And the Ohio Turnpike has RV lots with with electric for a small fee. That's pretty. Yeah, you know, that's a great idea. <clears throat> yeah, and that's that's the thing about rest areas, is the, the ones that we've been to kind of frown on staying longer than a, you know a while. Right, let's just say. a couple of like hours. Like they don't want you spending the night there. Right, and I always expect the knock on the door. Sure. Yeah. You know, middle of the night, and that's the. I wish there was a better solution, but, well, there is, and that's uh, this week's question. Okay, but are you going to tell us about your... Oh, do I have to? Well, you said you were. Oh, dear. Try okay. to make it PG, yeah. please. <laughs> so I was going to a Jimmy Buffett concert in San Diego, and that's when I lived in uh, Southern California, so basically L.A. So it's, I don't know what... 120 miles yeah. whatever so i'm driving home well i went to the jimmy buffett concert so i had on a like a swimsuit and it got really itchy and uncomfortable so i'm like i'll just take it off so then i see a rest area and well i had to pay the rent on you know the beverages you'd have indeed and i got out of the <clears throat> truck locked the door and closed the door and that's when i realized your swimsuit was locked inside yeah with my keys Oh, nice. Yeah. and Thank goodness for key fobs now, right? Well, <laughs> I guess, but this was back, back in the old back days. Back in the old days I mean, when you pushed the button. That truck even had a stick shift. Yeah. Uh, and, well, it anyway, <laughs> I had to figure my way back into the truck minus pants. Porky piggin. Yeah, basically. <laughs> So, yeah, right. there were some people at that rest area who were like, boy, I'm glad that, you know, I, I grew up more in a time when there were fewer cameras around. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's hurry and change the subject. Yes, Do you let's. have a question to ask for this week? Yeah, what creative boondocking sites have you found and are you willing to share? Oh, okay. So if you if it's not a rest area and if it's not Walmart and Cracker Barrel. Well, those aren't creative. Those are That's well what I'm known, saying. And yeah. if it's not Harvest House and Boondockers Welcome... Then if, after that, you have to get creative. So let's talk about your creative spots, Yeah, if where, you wouldn't mind. What kind of cool places have you found? And if so. it's more than, what is it, seven years, then it's past the legal well, limit. I, so yeah, you can't get assume, in trouble for telling right? us. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope it's more recent. <laughs> but And you can answer that question at our fun and friendly Stressless Campers Facebook group. You can. <clears throat> and you know, right, that we have a once a week, once a week <laughs> newsletter. Once a week. 
And it is a once a week newsletter, and it is absolutely, uh, totally, and completely free. Yep. And we have links to the stories, videos, and podcasts that will help you get the most out of your RV experience. So to sign up, just visit our website, and you can sign up on any page right at the bottom of the page and know that we would never mm -hmm. share your email or contact or any private information or any information with anybody. That's just for us to send you our. Once, a, Once week. a week, yeah, newsletter. That's all we're really willing to do. That's right. We don't want time. We don't have time for the, any others. And uh, also, while you're on the website, you can find the show notes for this episode, which is number two five four. Two five four, and on it's the, on the podcast page at stresslesscamping.com. Absolutely, and that's also where you will find our discounts and deals for the best deals on the things you'll need on your stressless camping adventure. Oh, and if you have a great deal that we don't already have on there, please reach out and let us know. We would love to add more and more deals on that page. Yeah, but know that, again, the things that we pick are things that we right. use or would use ourselves. Right. So we're not just taking any Correct. stuff. Because we do get a lot of those. Uh, we get a lot oh of emails yeah. like, do you want to partner with us? Do you want to... and. They're like not RV things, or they're just things that we, we would not. We got a weird not, one this morning. I don't remember what it was, but it was it. weird. I yeah. just dumped it. Anyway, we are in all the social <laughs> places as well, but you can start at stresslesscamping.com and from there jump off to any of the social places you are. And of course, if you don't want to miss a future episode of the Stressless Camping Podcast, it's free. It's free to subscribe on any podcast app, and we are saving you. A seat around our virtual campfire. Yeah. Oh, and, you know, Brian asked a good question this week on our Facebook group because okay. Google is... Re oh, uh, is, yes. What is the term? Sunsetting. Okay. Their podcast app. So, and he said, so if you're on Android, what do you use? And I think Spotify has been, been... the answer. Looking at yeah. the numbers, Spotify has been a very good uh, place for people to find us. And apparently they have now uh, superseded Apple. Oh. as the number one podcast Ooh. source. So, mm. I know. And as always, remember, please, that a review will help others find the podcast. Yep. And the screen went blank, and I haven't memorized this part yet. <laughs> and, and, of course, remember that a review will help others find this podcast. And more listeners means more great guests. Not like that guy we had today. Yeah, that guy was <laughs> a little sketchy. So, did you hear something you liked? Share what you find on our website or in our social posts. And if you would like to know how to share, we have tips for that, oddly enough, in our newsletter. Hey. So, well, I hope this episode kind of empowered your oh, again. <laughs> adventures. We appreciate your being here with us. And most of all, stressless, stressless camping. camping.